You shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your brethren. And then it goes on down to 16 and says, But he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. Do you think we're talking about physically going back to Egypt? You've got to build a lot of boats unless you can part the sea or walk a really long way around, right? I don't think that's what he's talking about. I don't think any of you do either. What was he talking about? He was talking about enslaving the people so that he, that person who had become king, could now advance himself. And we know that because it says, For the Lord has said to you, You shall not return that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor shall he greatly multiply silver or, and gold for himself. Right? There's no... There's no there's no unanswered questions. The, the leader is not to take his position and deliver for himself great wealth or great power or great control or anything else, right? Okay. What does that smack of? Stay with me now. Don't fall asleep yet. Okay. Keep thinking about what we're talking about in general. I'm looking for a single theme for all of this stuff that we're talking about right now. We'll talk about it in a minute. So Deuteronomy 18, 1 to 18, 8. My note is, those who serve the Lord, especially those who serve without making service their vocation, must trust in the Lord. Because the Lord, and just so you know, this has to do with the Levites, right? Being told, being, it's being reiterated, hey, you don't have anything in the land. You don't have anything in the land. Your portion is the portion that I've given you from my offering, right? That... At that point, the Levitical order is the priesthood. Okay? So this is a level of trust that they have to have in who? Who are they trusting here? When the Levites charge into battle with everybody else, knowing they're not getting any land, who are they trusting? Okay. What? Who said, who said something over here? Say again. The other Israelites. Okay, who says God? Who says the other Israelites? Who says both? How many people didn't see that right away? Oh, come on. Nobody said it. Really? Okay. Thanks for your honesty. I'm just messing with you. They would trust them both. Their God and Father and their brother. Their God and Father and their brother. So what does that mean? Who's the priesthood today? We are. God has not changed. We know who God is. We're good on that. <laughs> right? Who's the other set of people we have to be able to trust? Each other. Who said each other? Each other. Ten points. Go to head of class. Oh, you're already at head of class. Okay. Just these. So the point is this. We don't really give points, just in case any of you people who are visiting were wondering. Um, but it's an idea. Maybe we'll let you cash them in at the end of each month. Um, yeah, anyway, it was terrible. We are the priesthood. We're called for service, gifted for service. Many of us find it incredibly easy to trust which of those two entities Really? You're not sure whether you trust God or the guy sitting next to you more? Really? <laughs> Maybe if I sat next to you, it would be easier to answer that question. I don't know. But um, I think you all are just being nice to each other. The reality is, most of the time, we don't even have a problem trusting God on anything. Right? Sometimes we do. Sometimes we trust God and things don't go exactly the way we thought they were going to go. And the net result is... Man. But when we do that, truthfully, who is it we question having trusted? God or our own interpretation of what we thought we heard him say? I don't know how you're wired, but I can tell you how I'm wired. I never question God. I'm sure he's right. I just assume I wasn't smart enough to understand what he was telling me. 
That's a bad place to be, guys. That's a bad place to be. And it's not where your father wants you. Did you know that? He wants you to live an abundant, victorious, powerful life. My wife is just sitting there looking at me like, preach to yourself. Because she loves me, and I need that. I need that. Okay, I'm going to try not to go too long, so I'm going to keep going here. So, in Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 18, 14, we find out the community must be able to trust absolutely every single member that is in the community. Here's how we find that out. This is what the Lord says. He says, when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritualist, a spiritist, I'm sorry, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord has not appointed such for you. I bet you almost nobody in this room went and got a reading this week of their palm. Anybody go get their palm read? Tea leaves, coffee drinks, whatever it is, you guys. We know that part, right? But does that relieve us of all of these things? Are we free of all of these things? Let me ask you a question. And I'm not talking about you personally. I'm talking about people. Right? Because if I was talking about you personally, you might not listen to what I had to say. Right? I might not listen either. It's okay. Let me ask you about this one. Here we go. Let me go to this thing. Do, 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 do. Let's go to um, Conjures Spells. A sorcerer. Let's go with those two right now. Can just spell a sorcerer. Oh wait, witchcraft. Let's do witchcraft. How many witchcraft? How many witches in the room today? I didn't think so. I didn't see any brooms parked outside. It's okay. Um. Does anybody know the practice that is closest to witchcraft and sorcery today? that is prevalent in our society at large? <laughs> <It's in> politics. <laughs> if we gave points, that might be a 20-pointer right there. I'm sorry, what did you say? Drug use. Drug use? What's that like? It's like, like potions, yeah. right? Pharmacia. Yeah. Oh, I was talking about in this room, but yeah, absolutely. I know what Wiccans and, and there are witches and, and warlocks. So yeah, I got it. But what is but what is the practice? And that is a that's a segment of society. But there's a there's some practices that occur in our society on a regular basis that nobody really associates with anything more than a personality defect, right? Or a problem attitude that is just like witchcraft. What is it? I didn't think of that one. That's a good one, too. Advertising? Actually, that is a kind of, that is a type of what I'm talking about. Manipulation. That's where I was going with this. 
Did you all know that manipulation is witchcraft? It's a mind game. I don't care whether you call it politics or advertising. It's still manipulation, and that makes it witchcraft. You know what the problem with that is, don't you? If you're a drug addict, you can give up dra drugs, right? I mean, that, that's a possibility. Once you are clean of drugs, you can stay away from them forever. But if you're an eataholic, and don't anybody say anything, I know what you all are thinking, and I do like food. But you can't give up food and never eat it again. After about 40 days, it'll make you loopy. Right? Well, for those of you who tried it for 40 days, I'm just letting you know. It'll probably make you a little loopy. Okay? It might take less than that. It might take a day and a half. I don't know. It just depends who you are. But the, but the thing is, the thing is, um, you could fast and the Spirit can sustain you and it won't make you loopy then. But even Messiah with the Spirit fully indwelled in him only went 40 days. Right? We can't, you just can't give up food and expect to live the next 80 years. Right? In the same way, in the same way,